Today in aviation, we celebrate the anniversary of the legendary DC-8's maiden flight from Long Beach Airport in 1958, analyzing this aircraft in greater detail from its inception to its first flight. The Douglas Aircraft Company of Santa Monica, California, was the prop liner era's most successful manufacturer of civil air transports. It produced more than 16,000 units of the DC-3, the stalwart of the 1930s and 1940s, and followed it up with the very successful DC-4, DC-6, and DC-7 four-engine airliners. In 1948, Douglas started producing a successful jet fighter, the F-3D Sky Knight, of which it would make 265 for the U.S. military before replacing it in 1951 with the supersonic F-4D Sky Ray. This model saw sales figures that were even higher, 422 units, and was the first carrier-based aircraft to hold the world's absolute speed record, achieving 753 miles per hour. Douglas then established an office at its California plant to pursue a new ambition, a jet-powered airliner, something that had already been built in Britain where the British Overseas Airway Corporation, BOAC, had started flying from London to Johannesburg with five stops en route in 1952. Over the next year, BOAC had expanded jet service to Tokyo, Singapore, and Ceylon. Douglas' great rival, Boeing, had begun custom building a prototype commercial jet, the model 367-80, in 1952. When the Dash 80 took to the air over Washington State on July 15, 1954, America had made a major leap toward the jet age. The company was not to be outdone. Chief Project Engineer Igor Shogrun led designers through hundreds of jetliner configurations, including a Delta Wing. By mid-1953, they had settled on a swept-wing design with four potted underwing engines. By September 1954, Douglas had devoted more than $3 million U.S. and 250,000 man-hours to the DC-8 project. It hoped to sell some of the intended planes to the U.S. Air Force as tankers or transports. The final decision to go ahead with a pure jet airline remained with Donald Douglas Sr. himself, who gave his okay on June 7, 1955. The budget of $450 million U.S. made this the most expensive privately financed corporate venture to date. Although Boeing had beaten Douglas to the punch with the Air Force, Douglas got its revenge in October 1955 by grabbing the lion's share of a Pan Am order, 25 DC-8Bs with a 6 abreast economy layout as opposed to 25 abreast Boeing 707s. On October 25, 1955, with officials from 20 of the world's top airlines on hand in Santa Monica, Donald Douglas Sr. and United Airlines President Pat Patterson jointly announced an order for 30 DC-8As at a cost of 175 million U.S. Deliveries would start in May of 1959. It was the largest single order yet placed for commercial airliners. In June 1956, Douglas announced that the DC-8 would be built at its Long Beach plant where 4,285 C-47s and more than 3,000 B-17s under license from Boeing had been assembled during World War II. Finally, on March 26, 1958, four Pratt & Whitney JT-3 engines were attached to Ship 1 and the maiden aircraft rolled out of the hangar into broad daylight before an invited audience that included representatives of all 17 customer airlines. May 30, 1958 was the big day. Ship 1 took to the air for the first time from Long Beach at 10.10 a.m. local time. The crowds of spectators, estimated at as many as 50,000 people, surrounded the airport. The Federal Aviation Administration needed at least five miles of visibility for this first test flight. Typical Southern California coast, low clouds and fog caused a 10-minute delay. Arnold G. Hamerdinger was at the controls, William Bill Magruder in the right seat, and Paul Patton at the flight engineer's panel. Flight test engineer Bob Reiser was also on board, monitoring the flight data recorders in the main cabin. Heimerdinger took the airline north to Edwards Air Force Base in the high desert of Southern California, where the full flight test program would be completed. The total duration of the first flight was two hours and seven minutes. An escape chute 
installed in the lower fuselage, was ready should the crew have to rapidly parachute out. But the two-hour, seven-minute flight went up to 21,000 feet at 350 knots and back without a hitch, thus signaling the start of a successful legacy for the aircraft. On September 18, 1959, the DC-8 entered service with Delta Airlines and United, making Delta the first to operate the DC-8 in scheduled passenger service. The DC-8 was produced until 1972, with a total of 556 aircraft built. Published back in our January 2016 issue is a more in-depth study of a fantastic article by Jeffrey Thomas about the legendary DC-8 that takes a panoramic view of this superb airliner.